Hello, physics friends. Mr. Collier here. Today, another episode of Dynamics, The Inertia Strikes Back. And the reason we get that title is because we're going to be talking about momentum. A lot of people say that, oh, that thing was hard to stop. It had a lot of momentum. And that's true, but really what they're talking about is inertia. Today, we're going to talk about how momentum incorporates an extra variable. Momentum, specifically linear momentum, is going to be abbreviated with this symbol, P, and uh, you'll often see it as kind of a cursive looking P, that's uh, a Greek letter, and uh, that is equal to mass times velocity, so the, it's the product of mass and velocity. This is going to be a vector. Uh, direction is very important in momentum, as we're going to discuss uh, throughout the chapter, and its units are kilograms, meters per second, or newton seconds. Uh, these units are important, and they are not going to get their own special name, like a joule or whatever. But, you know, uh, mass is measured in kilograms, velocity is in meters per second, and those are your units. Now, a newton second, a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared, and if you just multiply that by seconds, right, seconds canceled, uh, and you get a newton second. What we're going to do next is revisit Newton's three laws of motion, but now we're going to put them in terms of momentum. So an object at rest stays at rest unless acted on by an unbalanced force, a net force. We can actually say that in terms of momentum. We can say a force is required to change an object's momentum. Now, momentum could be a result of any mass change, direction change, or speed change. Newton's second law uh, actually has some references to momentum in the original text by Isaac Newton. When, uh, Newton's second law simply says that force is equal to mass times acceleration. What we're actually going to look at here is how it is a change of an object's momentum is proportional to the net force applied. So, if we look at the equation for momentum, right, it is mass times velocity. And if we start simplifying that equation, mass times velocity, uh, we can actually factor out an m, and then we get a change in velocity. Oh, hey, change in velocity over time is equal to acceleration. Oh, mass times acceleration. So another way to write uh, F equals MA is change in force equals change in momentum over time. And one last reframing of Newton's third law is for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. Another way to say that would be that is momentum is always conserved. If one object loses momentum in a collision, then another object must gain an equal amount of momentum. And this will actually be a key piece that shows up in a lot of your homework is that momentum is conserved. So as you head to your first homework on momentum, you're going to see a lot of different examples that we can talk about. We're very often going to talk about objects interacting. So like in billiards, how the momentum from the ball is transferred to the uh, objects, and they're all going to move in different directions, but they're going to conserve that momentum, or uh, a rocket blasting off uh, and the momentum being conserved, so they're equal and opposite. So we're going to look at a lot of different examples and uh, you're going to start in on homework 6-1. Good luck.